people have been hunting, gathering, farming, cooking and eating food on the great southern continent for tens of thousands of years. But how have different cultures and their history in this country influenced the foods we eat in modern Australia? I think I can help you with that one. I don't need your help, thank you very much. Oh, really? So you can tell me exactly what types of food Aboriginal Australians have been eating for about 50,000 years? Well, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh... Join me, Miranda. And me, Norman, as we go on a food expedition to explore the bush foods eaten by Aboriginal tribes prior to British colonisation... The dietary changes caused by the first wave of European settlement... And how waves of migration after World War II have shaped what we eat today. All to discover exactly how history has created... Australian, Australian cuisine. cuisine. For about 50,000 years, Aboriginal hunter-gatherer groups lived off the native flora and fauna. Their diet was high in protein and fibre. In fact, there are almost 5,000 different types of native foods they had to choose from. Meat came from animals they hunted. Kangaroos, magpies and possum, goannas, wedge-tailed eagles and crocodiles. Crocodiles? Jeez! All I've ever done with crocodiles are wrestle them. You wrestle crocodiles? I didn't say I was any good at it. The type of food eaten by Aboriginal groups depended on where their lands were. Coastal tribes and those close to waterways ate more seafood. Fish, eels... And, for example, did you know that Parramatta, a suburb and river of New South Wales, is an Aboriginal word that means eel waters? And did you know that in northern coastal regions, the Torres Strait and other neighbouring islands, they eat turtles and dugongs? Dugongs, eh? Oh, please. Do go on. That's not funny. Yeah, you just don't get it. I get it. Oh. In the summer, local tribes travelled up into the alpine regions of what is now Victoria and New South Wales to eat bogong moths, which migrated there in huge numbers. Oh, man, I am terrified of moths. Just think of them as cuddly beige butterflies. Oh man, I am terrified of butterflies. Smaller delicacies included witchetty grubs. Ooh. And honey. Oh. Ants. Oh. Are you scared of ants too? Let's move on, hey? Bush tomatoes, desert yams and other root vegetables were also part of the diet. At mealtimes, groups came together around the campfire. They wrapped animals and yams in bark and used pit ovens for cooking or threw them onto the hot coals for roasting. Small foods were also wrapped in bark, leaves and organic materials for steaming. In fact, underground ovens that date back almost 30,000 years have been discovered at Lake Mungo. Seeds from grasses, shrubs and ferns were ground and eaten as a paste or cooked in hot coals to make cakes or loaves. The 36,000-year-old grinding stones that were discovered at Cuddy Springs in central northern New South Wales may be the earliest evidence of the bread-making process in the world. I love bread. I love bread too! And following the popularity of the macadamia nut, which is an Australian nut, more bush tucker like pepper berries, bush tomato and lemon myrtle are being grown commercially. Just like me, I'm an Australian nut. Please stop. I can't, I'm a nut. Then eating patterns changed fundamentally, right? That's right. And all kinds of things were introduced into Australian cuisine. But for that, we need to go back to 1788 when the British First Fleet landed in Botany Bay and established a penal colony. Food-wise, their plan was to start farming the staple foods of the British diet. But the harsh soil and weather conditions around the settlement made it hard to grow food. The first British settlers lived off goods imported from England, a basic diet of flour, salted meat, oatmeal and tea. They were reluctant to eat strange-looking marsupials, preferring animals they recognised. Fish, pigeon, goose and swan. Did you say they ate swan? Yes, and also... As, as in, like, they ate 
Swan? They ate swan. Oh. In Tasmania, which was then known as Van Diemen's Land, desperately hungry settlers tried stuffed wombat and fried echidna with mixed results. Would you say there is an iconic Australian food from this time? Yeah, it's also a symbol of life in the Aussie bush. It's damper. Of course, damper. Popular bread among swagmen and other travellers, it's made of flour, salt and water. It was probably invented by drovers who needed a food source that could easily be carried to remote areas and wouldn't spoil. When gold was discovered in Australia in the 1850s, people came from Europe, America and Asia in the hope of finding their fortune. Some Chinese migrants gave up the quest for gold to establish restaurants or market gardens. Others became grocers, supplying restaurants with fresh greens, a huge shift and influence on Australian cuisine, as this was such a rarity before. And it wasn't long before cities and ports had their own Chinatown. The Chinese introduced new flavours and cooking techniques, including ginger, soy sauce and, of course, the wok and the steamer. And European migrants brought with them the trend of street vendors selling ready-made foods like pies and pasties. These were our first fast food outlets. They sold what is now recognised as an iconic Australian food, the pie floater. Iconic? Never heard of it! That's because you're not South Australian. The pie floater is a pie drowning in a bowl of pea soup, and if you think it sounds awful, that's because it is. In 1864, the English and Australian cookery book was published, the first attempt to establish an Australian cuisine. It had recipes that combined native and exotic ingredients. Want to make stuffing for hare or kangaroo? There's a recipe for that in here. By Federation in 1901, the staple foods were mutton, lamb chops, meat pies with tomato sauce and colonial curries. Curries were made using native animal meats and farmed produce and were brought over from India, which was then part of the colonial British Empire. The Australian colonies were now also influenced by different spices from China and from India and coconut from Southeast Asia. After the First World War, food production packaging and transport became a lot faster. Improved supply of basic items like eggs, butter, flour and sugar, as well as new grocery items like desiccated coconut and cornflakes, led to the dawn of a golden age of Australian baking. A whole range of new cakes, biscuits and desserts were created, including lamingtons and Anzac biscuits the perfect accompaniment to a cuppa tea, the national drink. And in 1923, a Melbourne scientist used the yeast left over from beer production to create Vegemite, one of the nation's favourite spreads. Food habits from British colonial heritage remained, and the most important family meal of the week was the Sunday lunch roast. Yep, as that was becoming an iconic food of the nation, other world influences came into play. Norman, how did our food choices become so multicultural? Well, after World War II, a wave of European migrants and refugees came to Australia and they brought new ingredients, flavours and dishes. Greeks and Italians introduced coffee and exotic vegetables like capsicum, eggplant, zucchini, artichokes, olives and garlic. Australians also adopted their concept of outdoor entertaining, al fresco dining. Pasta dishes, a staple in many European countries, became increasingly popular in Australian homes. And in the 1960s, US fast food companies increased their presence in Australia with the offer of fast, cheap but unhealthy food options that would drastically change our eating habits. Changing attitudes in the 1970s saw an end to the white Australia policy and the introduction of the Universal Migration Policy, which brought people from Asia, Africa, the Pacific, as well as Britain and Europe. Refugees fleeing the Vietnam War brought their culinary tastes with them and have had a dramatic impact on our eating habits. 
from a bowl of pho. I think it's pronounced 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 pho. I believe it's pronounced pho. And the stir fry, a popular meal that's quick and uses fresh, healthy ingredients. By the end of the 20th century, Italian, Greek, Chinese, Vietnamese, Indian, Lebanese, and Middle Eastern cuisines have well and truly become standard fare in Australian restaurants and homes. Wow! What a diverse and interesting history. It seems like so many influences have helped to shape our food choices. Can we actually identify such a thing as uniquely Australian cuisine? Hmm. I just can't believe they ate swan. Yes, Norman, they ate swan. Ah!